Tony here. One of the most asked questions I see in the home theater community is whether or not to go with a receiver or to go with a processor with external amplification. It's not a simple question to answer as there are a number of variables which can affect the result. And rather than dive headfirst in and upgrade to a processor, I thought I would like to see what adding a power amplifier to my receiver's pre-outs would do and whether or not it would increase performance. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, as we take a look at the Electra Theta HD2 power amplifier in my living room setup to see whether or not it makes a noticeable difference to performance, so stay tuned. First of all, thank you to my good friend Mick from Sydney Hi-Fi Monovale for providing me with this amplifier to use for my testing. I'll have links to Mick in the description below. To give an overview of this amplifier, the Electra Theta HD2 is a high quality, very low distortion amplifier, which can produce peak power of up to 190 watts per channel in a standard music track going into 8 ohms. This specific model has 7 channels, although it can be configured with 1 to 7 channels based on your needs, even a single channel monoblock if you so desire. The chassis is made from powder coated 1.6mm mild steel, with both sides featuring large cast aluminium heat sinks, both of which are manufactured here in Australia. This particular model was provided through Cricks, who are a distributor for Electra here in Australia, and as such a custom front panel with the Cricks logo was added, and usually it does come with a faceplate that has the Electra logo on it instead. The dimensions are 445mm wide, 160mm high and 390mm deep and it weighs in at a hefty 25kg. There are 4 hard rubber feet underneath, it doesn't come with rack ears so you will be mounting it onto a shelf. All of the buttons and switches are of the highest quality and all contact points are gold plated for longevity as gold doesn't oxidize. Taking a look at the back, we have across the top 7 balanced XLR inputs. Underneath that we have toggle switches and RCA inputs which allow you to switch between balanced XLR and RCA as this amplifier will accept both inputs and the great thing about having the toggle is that you can individually choose which input you want to use each speaker channel for. Next we have the speaker terminals which can take banana plugs or bare wire. To the right of the unit we have the two 12 volt triggers for in and out as well as a toggle to turn it on and off. I was fortunate enough to speak to Arthur Rappos who is the founder and creator of Electra and he gave me a rundown on the internal components used in this amplifier as the case is riveted shut so I was unable to open it up for myself and see. All of the components used are audio grade components and of the highest quality. Arthur has the mindset that he wanted no compromises in performance and quality as his main goal over 20 years ago when he started designing and building these amplifiers was that he wanted to make an amplifier that sounded good for both music and home theatre. The capacitors are Nichicom capacitors which are very high quality audio grade and all of the internal components were sourced both locally and overseas to ensure that he had the very best parts for the design. There are no cheaper models of this amplifier available where costs have been reduced with lesser components. In my discussions with Arthur his aim was to produce as low distortion as possible so there is an error correction at the output stage to reduce distortion you would normally have by the order of magnitude magnitude several times that of a standard amplifier. You can place an order for one of these through Sydney Hi-Fi Monovale, I have left links in the description below. The MSRP is $4,395 for the 7 channel version. So I enlisted the help of my son to help me set the Electra up in the living room with the Crix New Phonics and Epicentrics as I thought it would be a good opportunity to get him involved and learn about the setup. I also brought the Crix Volcanic Slim from the home theatre to make it an all Crix setup for the test. Once the RCA cables were connected and the speaker cables plugged into the amp, it was time to power everything up and start testing. 
The first test that I did was with a track I often use when I'm doing demos for this system and it sounded great. There was more detail in the highs, the clarity was far better than I was used to hearing. Remember that I am used to hearing how these speakers sound as I've had them on loan for Mick for quite a while now, paired with my Pioneer VSX LX503. It was very surreal listening to the exact same speakers in the exact same location, but with a very different experience. So next we decided to test out the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is another track that I have used a fair few times lately. So it's quite fresh in my memory. Again, what I heard was exceptional. If I could describe it in my own very non-technical way is that it was very clear and vivid. I could hear sound effects more precisely with more detail and the vocals and mid-range were very smooth. Moving along to another movie my son and I really enjoy because we love Mustangs is Need for Speed and the chase scene in the dirt. There is a lot of deep rumble and throaty sound effects from the engine and it was extremely enjoyable to listen to. Again, clarity and positional effects were on point. Lastly, we fired up an oldie in Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End and one of my favourite scenes where they are intentionally attempting to tip the ship over. There are a lot of small creaks and groans and the detail in the soundtrack that I was able to pick up, needless to say, I was very impressed. So. The purpose of this video was to see if adding a power amplifier to a receiver's pre-outs would make a substantial difference over the sound performance over just the internal amplifiers inside the receiver. And I'd have to say that the test was a resounding success. The sounds were cleaner, crisper in the top end, more bright and vibrant in the mid-range, and I could see what Arthur meant about creating a low distortion amplifier that was great for both music and movies. I will say going into the test that I didn't think I would hear as much of an improvement as I did because I was convinced the processing abilities of the receiver would be the bottleneck and that any improvements on performance would be marginal at best, but I'm happy to say that I was wrong and the processing of the Pioneer was actually really good and it must just be that the internal amps are lacking. Ultimately, the biggest improvement in quality will come from using a dedicated processor with an amplifier. However, if you're like me, it becomes a matter of budget and it would be cheaper to stick with your receiver and start to save up for the amplifiers. So once you have them, you'll be ready for the final push to buy a processor. Generally speaking, an amplifier will last you a very long time and will likely outlast the receiver and even the processor. So it's a good investment in future-proofing your setup. My personal plan is to buy two of these Electra Theatre HD2 amplifiers for my dedicated home theatre and then use my Denon 8500 to send the signal to the amps as the Denon can be turned into full preamp mode by switching off the internal amplifiers and just using it as a processor. This is the next step that I'll be undertaking once I save up enough coin to buy them. Again, I'd like to thank Mick from Sydney Hi-Fi for loaning me this amp. I will have links to where you can buy it in the description below. And I'd also like to give a huge thank you to Arthur for spending some time with me on the phone this week to explain some of the internal workings of this amplifier. I really enjoyed our chat. Anyway, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now. So what did you think about the setup? This is the first time in the new studio. Um, it was fun. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. See ya.